presents his grainy, unfocused imagery in a series of performative spreads that creates movement that's, that's almost filmic. In 1956, William Klein was working much in the same vein as his, con as his contemporaries who were doing uh, individual photographs of street scenes. But for Klein, we know when he was doing these images in 1956 that he had specifically had the book in mind as a venue. Each shot was collated in sequence in his head as he was taking the photographs over several months to produce this book, Life is Good for You in New York, or simply known as, as New York. In the photo book, the photograph becomes almost secondary to the book as an expressive medium. The Dutch artist and um, photography critic, Ralph Prinz, has called the photo book an autonomous art form, compar comparable with a piece of sculpture, a play, a film. The photographs lose their photographic character as things in themselves and become parts translated into printing ink of a dramatic event called a book. This is as good a, defini as a definition as I can think of. And we can see this in the self-conscious, more contemporary book, Projects by Nikki S. Lee. Here, uh, Nikki Lee is placing herself in this beyond uh, Cindy Sherman-esque quality of, of, of self-making, um, in which she incorporates herself, not just as a part of another culture, but she subsumes herself <coughs> in that culture, and then after a few months begins to photograph herself in this kind of, in these various cultures that are not her own. She herself is a, uh, a photographer from uh, South Korea, but um, has lived in the United States for many years and began her career as a, as a fashion photographer, or began to work in fashion photography. And the book is very much a, a photo book of, of sorts, a photography book, a presentation of these projects chronologically which is emphasized by the fact that the number is still included on these Polaroid snapshot kinds of things. And it begins with this image. It begins with the image of the, the punk project. You know, very cynical, you know, very not down with it, and just, you know, uh, pretty much mired in the street scene as is. And it, it goes through various other projects that are all kinds of, uh, that represent all kinds of walks of life. But at the center of it, is the old person's project. This is the center of the book in which she becomes an older person. As I, in, this, in an interview, she said that she acquired all the accoutrements of being an older person and then presented herself to this community to say, I'm, you know, I'm a 30 year old or a 20 some odd old uh, artist and I'm, I'm doing this project. And they thought of her as just being a senile old lady and they humored her and allowed her to become part of the, uh, part of their, their community. In, in the center portion, these are very frontal images. They all seem to face forward, sometimes looking this way, sometimes looking that. At the beginning of the book, the images tend to look toward the interior of the book. At the very end, after a few more projects, the very last project is the Korean schoolgirl project in which she is transformed, we, we move from an old lady to a 14-year-old schoolgirl. And this is the very last image in that book in the year 2000. So this is, takes place over a three year period, these, these, this entire scope of, of the projects. And this is the very last image of the, the youthful exuberant looking backward into the book. This presentation, I don't, I don't know, but it, 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 it's, its use of negative space, positive space, multi images on pages, moves in an incredibly thematic and um, engaging way that establishes for me the fact that She's very conscious, even when she's, she's not taking the picture, somebody else is taking this picture. So her editing is very, is very specific in terms of creating an environment that looks back into the center of the book from either end, from this very cynical place, this very youthful exuberance place at the end, to old age and possible death in the center. This, can't, this can be done perhaps in a, in a museum gallery effectively, but not as effectively as this very personal space in which I am turning the page, where I activate the encounter. So the encounter and the photograph at a, in a personal space, so personal 
that I might be in bed with this book, right? I might take a shower, with, I mean, take a bath with this book. <laughs> I might sit on the toilet with this book, talk to the Lord. We take these books, these, these, these images to our most private spaces because the book is that personal. Now, we may also apply Prynne's definition to the two last two possibilities that I think of. The first is what I call the photographic book work, right? Now, photo book work. There's the photo book, which is you know, considering at least a space book. But then there's the photo book work, where the photographic image is considered almost entirely within the context of the book form. And Ed Ruscha's many book works have been, can be considered in this category, such as this 1967, his 1967 book, uh, Royal Road Test, where his anti-stylist snapshot photography serves not only to serves not only as, a, as, a, as images in themselves, but carry the book's humor in the most cynical and clinical of ways. His iconic 1966 book, Every Building on the Sunset Strip, is also almost clinical in nature and somewhat cynical as well. But its presentation has a sweeping drama to it that is at odds with, the, with its very matter-of-fact imagery. The book may be viewed like this in a page-by-page uh, -page way, so we're reacting, you know, one page slice at a time as we activate the, uh, the venue space. And it may be unfolded to its full 27-foot length. The street and even the photographs themselves are, are somewhat forgettable, but the book imbues um, the mundane almost with a sense of, of grandeur. And at the same time, as, as original as this may seem at the time in the 1960s, he's making very specific references to book spaces as venue that go back to the Middle Ages. I mean, just one example would be this, this 19th century uh, view book, a panorama of the Hudson River, which does exactly what um, Ruscha is trying to attempt. It's both sides of the Hudson River labeled in the same way Not original, but placed in a particular context, it comes across as, well, his is actually quite beautiful, and, and his is quite beautiful too, but his is, has a, a mundaneness that goes beyond the s simple recording of fact. Finally, there is the photographic artist book, in which photography becomes one of the main media which that an artist employs in order to be expressive within the book form. So it becomes just another medium, you know, where the photograph is important, but it's, it's as, as important as structure, or as important as paper, or as important as pigment. Just another tool that the artist uses to get access to the book space in an expressive manner. Here the photograph, with its very specific vernacular and syntax, syntax actually becomes the book. I just want to give you a few examples. This is Karen Hanmer's book, Letter Home. This is the cover, the front and back cover of the book. It is a flag book. It has a concertina binding. It's a kind of a folded concertina binding. Imagine an accordion, right? And inside the book, on the accordion folds, are these little flags. And the flags have um, text and images. The images, the text is a letter home by this woman who is in, from the Midwest, and you can see, see that she's in Florence, you know, it's almost kind of a Disneyland quality about that image in Florence, and she's writing home to her, to her Midwestern parents on the farm in Minnesota. And as you turn the flags, you're, the, the, the text is foregrounded, and the image is backgrounded, but you can pull that, that book apart, get the accordion to come out like this, and the image, the text becomes completely lost, and the image is foregrounded. At the same time, the back gets transformed. So you have an image of, you know, again, the Disneyland image of, of Florence, but as you unfold it, the reality of the kind of mil military cell block where she was stay staying comes to the fore. Another book by um, Karen Hammer, she's a Chicago artist, photographer, and book artist, is Mirage. This is the, the front and back cover of Mirage. And these are the images that you find inside. 